Halloween would not be complete without a trip to Grimsley Village. If you remember, last year we visited Dr. Derange, the mad scientist, and this year it's the town's forsaken cemetery. The cemetery gates have been locked for years, no one goes in, and no one comes out. Buried behind the gates are some infamous characters like Dracula and the members of the Usher family. It's rumored that a werewolf stalks the ground. The locals lock themselves in their homes on a full moon. So sit back and relax as I reveal the secrets of the Forsaken Cemetery. To go along with this project, I have some image sets. The first is a collage sheet that has a lot of the tombstones and the gruesome statues and gargoyles and things like that. And then I also have a digital set which includes all of the images that you see in the collage sheet and a whole bunch more. So you get a lot more tombstones and statues and creatures and whatnot and plaques and you get um, tomb entrances, doors, all that kind of thing. And there's a total of like 54 images. So um, everything I used in this project image-wise came from either the collage sheet or the digital image kit with the exception of the werewolf. So the first piece I'm going to cover is Dracula's Reliquary and the base is made out of two different pieces. You can see in the top left hand corner that's just a chipboard base that you can assemble. It's four by four inches and then um, I I'm using these little match boxes in a couple of different ways and you'll see those in other pieces but they come in this box and so the bottom of the box ended up being the bottom of the base on top of that and then um, I sprayed these with stone texture paint Now you're gonna see me do a lot of the stone texture paint I love using this stuff it's really easy and of course in doing something like a, a cemetery um, it just works perfectly and um, in this case, I used one color on the base and then one color for the Gothic table, chipboard table, and that's just a really simple table to assemble on the center. And I thought that would look really cool, this Gothic table with his coffin on top. Now, if you don't want to invest in uh, multiple cans of this stuff, um, there's always the option of just using it to give you texture and then going over it with paint and that way that you can create multiple colors uh, without av actually having to have a whole bunch of cans of these of different colors. And uh, it does come in a jillion colors and there's a couple of different brands and I'll, I'll show you each one as we get to the different pieces. Now the coffin is a little chipboard kit. It's easy to fold and glue together and so that's what I did and then I glued the lid to the base and to jazz up the coffin I added some Dresden so before painting it I glued on a piece of the black Dresden that you see up there and I glued some of the border Dresden to the top of the or the size of the lid and the size of the bottom piece and then I painted the whole thing with a glossy uh, black paint um, and then once I'd done that and it dried, then I just took my finger with some gold, or I'm sorry, silver paint and just rubbed it over the uh, Dresden just to kind of bring out the detail. And then I imagined that Dracula would be changed in his coffin so he's not out causing chaos. And so I just wrapped the coffin a few times in some chain and then uh, used a jump ring and a... Um, and a lock to look make it look like it's locked up. Now that lock is was brass, yellow brass, but I just painted it with the same silver paint. Now for the side supports, I used this uh, chipboard triptych and it comes with three pieces and there are, uh, each piece has an overlay, a, 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 a ornate overlay and then a solid back piece. And what was great about this is I got a twofer on this one because I used it both for this piece and then the other bits of it that I didn't use all the solid back pieces and one of the uh, overlays I used to build a separate piece, which I'll go into that later. Um, and so basically I painted uh, each of the overlays black and then the tops to make that pop a little bit more because I got this black gray silver thing going on. Painted those silver and then I thought it would be really cool to have them mounted on something and I kind of did this for two reasons. One is I wanted to get the roof part up a little higher off the coffin and then I just thought it would look cool and of course it's Dracula so I figured having bats around the edge and 
the um, the arches resting on the shoulders of the bats would look cool. Now these are just black bat beads and again to bring in the silver I just used my finger to rub some silver paint on them and that kind of popped out some of the detail. Now for the roof I just cut a thick chipboard piece and the measurement is four inches by two inches and then I used a different paint. Um, this is kind of a the other paints I used are look a lot more uh, textured and gritty and this is like a little bit finer smoother stone look and so I used that and sprayed the top with that and then you can see some more Dresden dressing up that roof and that Dresden was black and I painted it silver so that would pop a little bit more and then you can see the Dracula uh, plaque there which comes from the digital image kit. Now you can see the finished piece. Um, I've got uh, the Dracula plaque at the top from the uh, digital image kit. I've got a bat hanging from the Dresden and then you can also see a candelabra with uh, three candles. Those are birthday candles that I shaved down with an X-Acto knife and I kind of wanted them to look like twisted and so I, I'm not symmetrical so I just kind of shaved them to the size I needed and then glued them all in place. Now for the haunted mausoleum, I started with a kit that had a two-part base and for this I wanted to put some lighting inside of it and this base was perfect to be able to tuck all the stuff underneath it and tape it all up underneath the bottom part of the base. And you can see that I assembled the base, I painted it, and I used a different stone paint. Uh, this is, this is kind of like that gray one that's not as, not as uh, greedy looking, it's a little bit smoother look. And then I punched holes all the way through both of those bases to accommodate sticking two sets of the lights. And these lights are red. And um, so those came all the way up. And then I will continue to do that when I add the next piece. Now the main structure is a kit. And it comes a couple different ways. You can either get the full kit, which comes with all the window pieces and turrets. Um, which is what I ended up doing, or you can just buy the basic uh, structure, and that's what you see in the bottom left uh, corner. Now I started by uh, use, taking the base and poking the holes in it, just like I had for the, or I should say the floor of the main structure, putting holes in that so that the lights would come up through it from the base. And then I painted the inside of it, I sprayed it with the same uh, stone paint that I sprayed the base with, and then the outside of the house was covered with the stone paper and it's actually embossed so it, it has kind of like a texture to it. Now before adding the roof I decided I was going to put some vellum in the windows um, so you would have the soft glow from the lighting on the inside and so I just cut sheets of vellum and glued them uh, to each wall where the windows were on the inside and I also that small window above the door I also put some vellum behind that and then it comes with the trim piece whichever kit you buy and so I've got the trim piece around the doorway and then inside you see an image now that image is in the digital kit of the ghost the girl that's the ghost so that I glued against that back wall and then I turn the lights on and you can get an idea of how it glows inside there with the four red lights uh, turned on now the roof I've papered with uh, a roof tile image from the DigiKit and then I've added some fencing around the outside and I painted that a brown color and then just on the inside of the entrance there instead of putting a door because of course I wanted to be able to see inside um, I just put a different kind of fencing there just the idea is that you know you can't go in you could just stand there and look inside. Inside the mausoleum are two coffins and those coffins are just tiny little coffins that are kits um, just you, all you do is fold it up and glue it in place really simple and I sprayed those with some of the stone paint and then I wanted some kind of a base to lift it up and the fencing that I put around the outside the negative pieces that you punch out I thought those would work really nicely for the fence and especially with little detail things like this uh, chipboard cut out things. There's, sometimes there's just a lot of little cute things that are the negative parts that you can use uh, to use for something else and get more use out of the entire piece. So I basically glued a bunch of those 
in a, in a uh, rectangle and spray painted them just big enough to hold the coffin and then I just glued the coffin on top of that. Then inside you can see the two coffins that are in front of the image that's way in the back uh, from the kit that's got the ghost on it. So that's glued against the back wall and then you've got the two coffins glued in between and then you can see the red glow of the lights coming up through the floor into the room. As a final touch on each side of the mausoleum, I attached some wire, what do you call them, trees or vines. Um, what I do is I take something called fun wire, and I like using it. It's, it's a plastic coated wire, so it's a little bit thicker, but it's very easy to bend. And cut strips of that and just twist it all together however you want to twist it. You know, make the base a little thicker and then just uh, keep adding wire and, and twisting it until you have as many branches as you want and then I just attach those to the side of the base on each side of the mausoleum and then here you can see what it looks like uh, the the red glow of the lights from the outside glowing through the vellum and you can see what a what a really nice effect that is The Angel Shrine is made out of a different kit, uh, pretty easy to put together, and I decided to use the same base kit that I used for Dracula, and I, I used uh, one of the gray stone paints, and then you can see the unfinished fence, and I used that to uh, fence in the, uh, the base. Now inside the shrine I have used some draping. Now those are images from the digi kit and I used the original size and then I sized one a little bit smaller and um, I popped them up from the back and from each other just to give them more depth. And then to dress up the outside I used uh, the scroll work is, is, a, uh, is a die cut chipboard and then I have an angel, uh, brass angel charm, and then I hung uh, the lanterns off the edges with jump rings. Now to uh, color the, the uh, decorative stuff at the top, and, and there also there's a band of um, Dresden, it's the same Dresden I used on the Dracula coffin, is I painted everything black first, and then using my finger I rubbed over all of those pieces with a dark gray, and then once that dried, I did the same thing again with a light gray. And so that way you kind of get the three tone by going, always go from dark to light. And then you can see on the corners, I've used a little cherub uh, feet that, that bring it up and it's going to sit up on top of the base. And I thought that looked cool. And then, of course, the whole angel thing that worked well. Now, those lanterns, they're paper and they come from um, a uh, collage sheet, a half collage sheet of lanterns and uh, if you have any of my stuff from the other village the other village pieces you may already have lanterns in the collage sheets and, and kits that you have because they are these are all in there as well now I wanted the inside to glow and be lighted and so what I decided to do is the angel image I decided to put a tea light behind it the base is pretty big so um, once the angel is sitting inside of the shrine. Uh, you can't see the tea light. So I take some uh, blue nonstick tape, I wrap up the light part, and then I use the stone paint, the same stuff that I did for the structure, and I painted the top and the sides of the tea light. And I don't glue it in place inside the shrine, so that way I can lift up the angel and pull it out and then flip that switch. And I used a, a, a kind of a, a, a bluish light, so it's unlike the other tea lights that I show you I use that which are orange flickering ones because this is an angel shrine I thought oh, okay she's good and I'll I'll give her a nice beautiful blue light now you see the shrine in place in the cemetery now for the uh, gates the one on the left I glued in place with it open and the other one I just laid it there and that way it kind of looked like it had fallen off and I needed to get in to get the angel in and out so um, I decided just to lay that there and then uh, the next picture you see you can you can see that blue glow um, unfortunately my camera with all those flickering lights from all of the tea lights it just really had a hard time getting a good focus so I apologize that the night pictures are a little fuzzy uh, but I think at least it gives you the idea of of how the shrine looks uh, when you when it, the lights are lower and you can see that blue glow coming uh, from the inside
Now the Castle Reliquary is the twofer that I get with Dracula and I use the same triptych. It's the same piece. Um, if you remember back, I said I took the three, the, the, the triptych pieces. I just used two of the overlays for each side of the coffin. So that left me with one overlay and three backs. So I took the three backs and used those for the side and back of the structure. And then the leftover overlay goes in the front. I painted it with a stone paint. And then the base is just a, uh, box lid that I had in my stash and then I painted that with a different stone paint and then you can see just like the last um, piece the um, the angel shrine that I've used the, the stone draping inside I, again I used the original size that's in the kit and then I downsized it twice to give me uh, the three different curtains that you see in the back and they're all popped up they're popped up from the back of the wall with double stick tape uh, foam tape and then they're popped up from each other and so you know you don't see it quite as well in the picture here but if you look at it um, in three dimensions you really see the depth of those curtains now on the outside after I had sprayed everything I added some uh, stone looking paper with the engraving that you see so the paper is on the sides on the outside and the back and then I also use the same paper on, on the inside back underneath the, the uh, curtains and then for a roof um, I didn't have anything for that so this is another one of those things where I'm using the negative pieces from fencing and the fencing that I used um, this is the fencing that I use as as part of the wall all the way around the cemetery and it has these cool little pieces um, that are in between each one of the the rods or whatever you call those and so I glued a bunch of them together and I made two pieces that would serve as a roof and then you can see them glued into place on top of the the uh, the shrine piece and then I, I you see the picture kind of tilted sideways on, on its side I wanted just so that you could see the holes and it's really cool how the light filters into the inside of the piece and then um, just like I did for the angel shrine I had another statue and so I did the same trick with putting the tea light behind it spraying it uh, with a stone paint and then gluing it to the back of the the uh, statue and now I can move that in and out uh, to turn the light off and on. Final touches on the piece uh, is a spider skull charm that I added to the the center from my stash and then you can kind of see the light this this uh, particular tea light is one of the amber colored um, uh, flashing ones, uh, flickering ones, and so you can see that inside. And then I ended up attaching the same kind of wire um, vines, tree things to the sides of it, just like I did to the uh, haunted mausoleum. This is another one of those things where I've used a little kit, but I use it differently. Um, you can see in the upper left hand corner it's this folded shrine and what I did was I used the sides in the backs like you see there and uh, but the, but the connecting pieces instead of putting them in between I've used that as a bottom and a shelf and I've papered it with a, a dimensional uh, embossed stone paper and then I've used another one of the colors of, uh, of paint uh, the stone paint for for the inside and then uh, you can see the finished piece the the shelf at the top gave me a, gave me a place to sit the little um, skeleton statue and then I put one of the tombstones from the images in front and it covers up the tea light which is in the back sitting on that little shelf so the tombstone is just laying against it so that I can just move that and get the tea light out and turn it on and off In addition to the kits, I decided to also use some paper images to create some tombs. And the first one is for the family usher, for you Poe fans. And uh, I printed multiple versions of it so that I could create a more dimensional look by popping up layers and layers of the images. And then uh, just to put, give some depth to the piece and also to make it stand up, um, I ended up making a little chipboard partial box. I did not have a box that would work to go in the back of that. Obviously, that would be much easier than having to make something. But uh, I basically just made uh, 
a, a partial box sides one top you don't really need a bottom in the back and I made it just slightly smaller than the image of the usher tomb and then uh, to dress it up a little bit more I used this gargoyle charm which I um, or brass element that um, I rubbed some gold onto that and then I also use this other product called Elements to create some vining around the piece. Now I'm going to cover that product a little bit later on. I approached the second tomb the same way. I basically used the images and created dimension by printing it more than once and cutting out layers. And again, I had to make my own box for the back. Um, but like I say, the other one, if you've got one, that's much better. And then the only difference in this one is, um, other than, um, you know, doing the same layering, I've got, I have the gargoyle image sitting on the top, and then I used another kind of fencing. It's, it's a very gothic looking fence just to go around the front. And then, of course, you see the ghost on, which it already comes that way with the ghost on the image of the door. Now for the base, I'm using foam core. And I chose to use three pieces that are glued together for a couple of reasons. One is I needed a, um, a deep enough surface that it would support holding the walls up and the fencing up. And then secondly, I wanted to pull the foam core a little bit away from the uh, gate. I, did, I thought it looked funny for the foam core just to be slamming up against the gate. So that allowed me to make some steps. So the first step takes it away from the... Um, away from the uh, gate and then I have a couple more steps. And I, I just think it looks better anyway. Now in terms of cutting the foam core, um, I laid all my pieces out and I measured the width and the depth and I came up with about 26 inches by 14 inches. Now the board that I purchased came 28 inches so I just went ahead and added a couple inches to it and that way I don't have to make one cut. So um, I clamp all three together, didn't glue them, just clamped them together and that way they hold uh, nice together and I'm going to cut them all at the same time and that way I get a nice clean cut that uh, where they're all cut exactly the same and um, I first measured in 14 inches deep and made marks and then using a metal ruler and a box cutter and it's important to put a fresh blade in you'll get a much better cut you won't get uh, snags and things like that so if you use a new box cutter uh, blade then that'll work much better and I just lay the ruler down along the line that I've drawn the 14 inches in line and I slowly cut through each layer do not worry about cutting all the way through the first time you'll get a much nicer cut if you just start on one edge and go straight to the other edge along that metal ruler and just do that several times slowly cutting through the foam core and that will give you a really really nice cut now once you do that, if you should have any issues where you've got any little sniggles or things, you can always take a piece of sandpaper and just sand that down. And remember, particularly on that cut, the back cut, um, you're going to have a wall there if you're doing what I'm doing. You're going to have a wall there. So if you have little foibles, you, you'll, you can certainly hide them with the wall and, and nobody will ever know they're there. So now the next thing to do is to start cutting the steps. And uh, again, I keep those clamped together and I figured out where I wanted the steps to be. Now the fencing, the two pieces of fence with the gate are fairly long and I didn't want to cut it away from all of that. It would be great if I could, but then I would have so little support for that fencing and that gate. I just need some, some area where I can glue a lot of that to the foam core. So I kind of came up with a happy medium but I decided on 12 inches. So my, my steps are 12 inches wide. So I found the center point of that 28 inches which is 14 inches and then I know I'm going to make it 12 inches wide so I divided up 12 inches into two which would be six so my center dot at 14 inches I went six inches on each side and then that is the width of the steps and now in terms of the depth I just arbitrarily picked three quarters of an inch you can do whatever you want but I picked three quarters of an inch and so now I'm going to measure in three quarters of an inch and that will tell me how deep the cut is so now with all three pieces together I'm going to cut through all three a quarter of an inch in by 12 inches wide now once I did that I take away one of the pieces of foam core now I'm going to cut the next step and I'm going to have two pieces of foam core just clamped together not glued I'm going to have those clamped together and then I'm going to again measure in a quarter, three quarters of an inch and then again 12 inches wide, make my next marks and then I'm going to cut the next one. 
Once I get that piece cut out, then I'm going to put that one aside, take that top one off, and now I'm left with one more. And again, I do that one more time. I go three quarters of an inch in by 12 inches wide, and that gives me my third step. So now I have all three steps cut. And again, just like with the back, if you have any little sniggles or anything that, that uh, is rough or whatnot, you can take a piece of sandpaper and just sand that out. Now, while that, all that I have everything cut, I can go ahead and glue these together. And the way I do that is I just take a paintbrush and some Mod Podge, you can use whatever glue you want, and I basically paint the whole surface. It's really important to get the corners and the edges, but you really want the whole surface. I paint that and then, um, and then put uh, the second stair on top of the, the bottom piece and let that dry and put weights on it, on the whole thing, not just some of it, not just corners, not just middles. You need to cover the whole thing with weights. And the reason being is anytime you get moisture on the paper, this foam core, it likes to warp and it likes to bend. And so you don't want that to happen. So you need to let that dry. And particularly if you are living in a wet climate, I'm in a very dry climate, so this dries pretty quickly. But if you're in a wet climate, you really need to leave that on there for a while and let that dry. And then once you've let that dry, then do the same thing again. Paint the next layer, put the top piece on, and then cover the whole thing with weights. Next I covered the entire surface with the stone paper that you see there. I just decided that it would be easier just to cover everything and not worry about what was going to be grass and what wasn't and trying to cut the paper up to make pathways and that sort of thing. And I didn't worry too much about where you see it piecing because I did ink the edges so they wouldn't be white but um, there's, there's so much stuff in there, you just you don't even see them. Then I thought I was going to paint the steps uh, with the stone paint instead of papering, but um, I ran out of paint, so that didn't work. So I ended up uh, just painting the steps with a, a color, a complementary color to the stonework, and that seemed to work just fine. The fence I used is available in multiple pieces, so you can just purchase what you want. Um, the cemetery arch is a separate piece, the gate itself is a separate piece, and then there's complementary fence sections that are also separate. So to make the main entrance, I used a combination of all of that. So I have the whole main center area as well as the other fences on each side. Now the total width of, if you use all of that, it's 19 inches. So it's that 19 inches that I centered on the foam core board and only cut 12 of it out in front of the gate. And so that way the gate is uh, not butting up against the chipboard for 12 inches across it, but the last bits of it on each side do butt up right against the, uh, the foam core base and can be glued to that base. Now, in order to connect all the pieces, um, mine was not going to be a functioning gate, so I didn't need hinges. So I really needed something that spanned the entire distance from the um, gate across the arch piece and then on to the um, side fences. And so again, I used a negative piece from the fencing. Now that's exactly the same piece that I used in the haunted ma mausoleum to make the little tables to prop up the, um, the uh, coffins. So um, I just painted those and attached those across that whole span, and then that gave me a lot of support there and it also connected all those pieces. And I, I painted it a light or a dark gray, and then I did uh, some accent painting with gold, the sign, and other bits on the on the wrought iron uh, of the fence. And then for the center, I used two. Uh, these are um, connectors and uh, brass connectors, and I thought they were cool because they had skulls on them, and the, I saw, thought of those as handles. And then. Because this is the Forsaken Cemetery and nobody goes in and nobody comes out, I decided I would wrap chain around it and then put a lock on it. And this is the same lock that I used for Dracula's Coffin. It's just the Dracula's Coffin one that I painted silver. And then this one, I just left it the brass color that it is. Something I thought would be cool would be to have columns. And not only would it look good, it uh, would allow for more support for the walls as they come into the corner of the foam core. And I decided to use tea lights because it, there's not a lot of wiring and stuff. And I was thinking that the cores of toilet paper would be the perfect size. They're just a little bit bigger than a tea light. 
And so um, I started, you need four obviously for each corner, and then you need to figure out how to cut away some of the bottom so that that, that round column slips over the pieces of foam core. And so the first thing is to figure out how tall your foam core is. In the case of mine, it was a little over half an inch. And so you want to measure half an inch up the height of the core. And you can see on the far right, I have done that and made a, a dot. And then um, from there, you want to, to, I just determined about an inch across would be enough to, to slide it on there enough. So next you want to uh, measure an inch across that where the dot is, half an inch on one side of the dot, half an inch on the other. And then I marked lines going down at the end of that inch. And so that's my area that I need to cut away. And one nice thing about using something like this, like this too is the cores bend some, so you can kind of flatten them a little bit while you're doing your measurements. So just got in there with a pair of scissors and cut that away. And then the next thing is to paint it all up. And I also decided to add a little bit more to it just to make it look a little bit fancier than just a straight column. And so I took a thin chipboard and wrapped it around the top. I did two layers of that and the bottom two layers, except I didn't wrap it past that point where the cutout is obviously because we need to slide that on. Another thing you could do is you could add some Dresden to, to jazz it up or you could add glue on some objects and then paint over all that. So you could really make these look very fancy if you wanted to. And then if you look at the next picture, you can see how that open area just slides right over that corner and that's a great place, a glue point for you to glue um, the column into the corner. Next I need to work on the lights and so I took four tea lights and wrapped the light part with some uh, low tack tape just like I did for the statues. Painted it the same color on the top and the sides as I did the columns and then I need to make some collars because I don't want that tea light slipping down into uh, the column, so I need to make a collar that's a little bit bigger than the column uh, diameter. And then um, I also paint those and then I cut a slit in them so that I could slide it around and uh, put it onto the tea light. And then I sprayed it with a little bit more paint just to kind of cover up that, that cut line. Remove the tape and now you've got a nice tea, lot, tea light that you can slip in and out of the top of that column and uh, turn it off and turn it on. For the walls, I'm using more of the foam core and I actually used the part that I cut away when I was sizing the three pieces for the base. Um, and I'm putting them everywhere there is no fencing. So in the front of the structure, um, I've got that 19 inch gate fence thing going centered right on the base. So I'm cutting um, some foam core pieces that will go on each side of the gate that measure the distance between the end of the fence and the column. And of course, depending on the size of your structure, yours will be different. And I did measure every single one of them, even though like for the sides, you would assume they'd be the same. I didn't assume they'd be the same because you never know there could be a little bit off. So um, I decided to make them four and a half inches high and then cover them with paper, the stone paper that you see. And a little tip for you I thought made it easier is to cut some small pieces to go on the sides so that way it covers the sides of the foam core and then cover the main area, making a long strip that you glue from the bottom of the foam core piece and flip all the way over to the back. So that way you've got solid, you've got uh, paper on the sides and then you've got a continuous paper that goes over the top and down. And the stone paper does kind of have a direction to it. So whatever paper you use, if there is a direction, be mindful so that you're not looking at it. And this stone looks upside down and this stone looks the right side up. Now on the front, we've got the fencing and then we've got two pieces of foam core for the wall part. On the sides, I use that same uh, additional fence and put that in the middle between two pieces of uh, foam core. And I did that on both sides. And again, like I say, I, I centered that piece of fence on the side and then I measured what the distance was between that and the columns. And then, um, then the back is just one solid wall, all foam core, and I just covered that with the paper. Now, anywhere the fence is being glued and attached to the foam core, you'll be able to see behind the fence the three pieces of foam core, and I, I mentioned that I painted that area brown, but you'll still be able to see it. So what I did is I ended up adding some, um, some of this uh, foliage to all the way around uh, sheet moss 
all the way around. I, I ended up putting all the way around the thing, but definitely you want to glue some of that to those areas of the fence where you can see through to the foam core. And so in the front, it's not all of it because a lot of that front fence faces the um, the steps, but in the uh, in the areas where it's on farther on the edges, and then of course those two pieces on the sides, those are going to be um, going to be open as well, and you'll need to put some kind of moss or something there. Something I forgot to cover earlier in the video was uh, another component of the steps. You may have noticed when you were looking at it that when I originally cut it, the first step was cut away and then you've got the two tiers. Well, you need to add something for that step. I mean, you don't have to, but I thought it wouldn't look good if you saw the surface of the table in that open area. So all I did was glue a very uh, thin piece of chipboard under there, uh, cut it a little bit bigger than the, uh, the area, and just glue that underneath. You don't want to use anything heavy because you don't want it to, um, to cause the platform not to be level, but just a thin piece of chipboard um, glued under there and that gives you that step area. In addition to all the other pieces, the crypts and tombs and mausoleums, I also used several of the tombstone images. And for some of the images, like the two at the top on the, uh, on the right side, I've encased the image inside of this chipboard set. It, it's a, there's three different chipboard pieces and there's the overlay on the front and then the solid part in the back. And so I painted the overlays with the stone paint and then inserted the tombstone in there, the image, and then I also used these narrow matchboxes. They were just kind of the perfect size uh, to create bases to pop those up a little bit. And then um, in the middle row, you can see more of the images. And again, I've, the center one is is I've used um, used one of those uh, chipboard pieces. And then the Anita shovel there, I just popped up some of that, the cat in the top part. And then the other two in the bottom, I just created some broken ones where I just cut it in broken way and then uh, drew some cracks and that sort of thing in there. Now if you look at the finished uh, tombstones, here's the Ben Better and um, I've got the grass plot in front, that's just uh, more of the greenery that I was using to go around the side, the, the moss. And then I've got a spray of flowers going over that and two beads, those are uh, skull beads. And then um, if you uh, go to the next one, um, you see another one of those. It's, it's next to the, the little shrine with the, with the, um, with the uh, skeleton. And again, it's got a little plot of grass and, and the uh, framed piece. And then here's a couple of the broken ones. You can see I've just kind of glued them on to the, uh, to the uh, floor of the chipboard uh, in a kind of a broken way. So there's the beige one. And then now you kind of see the green one in front of the wolf. And then the last one here is Anita's shovel. Obviously she did find a shovel finally, and uh, she left, but she left some parts behind. And this is where I cut another hole. You saw that probably earlier in a picture. I cut another hole into the, um, the foam core base so that I could uh, recess that grave. And um, if you uh, do something like that, you need to put the chipboard underneath it just like I did for that first step. And then I lined the grave with this stuff called elements. Again, I will cover that uh, further down in the tutorial. And then uh, put some skeleton parts in there. I've got the shovel image. I took the image of the bottom of the shovel and then uh, stained a, a skewer and used that as the handle. And then I've got some, some black spiders crawling out of there and then some more of the moss around it. And then there's a buzzard sitting there hanging over it. Now, the, the way the buzzard works is another beauty of the foam core is that you can... Uh, wedge in a, a uh, toothpick in between your images and then that stick that right down in the foam core and so now you can have these one-dimensional or two-dimensional images just sticking up and without having to glue or do anything else. Now I use four different trees. Um, there's two up in front of the gate or right behind the gate and then two in the back and there's two different sizes. They're die cut chipboard and the first thing I did was just paint them a dark brown and then once I painted them a dark brown, then I added something called elements. And this stuff is just really cool. Uh, it's, it's just little bits of uh, earth and seeds and all kinds of other stuff. I'm not quite sure. It's got a little bit of glass glitter in it. it just, I've used this stuff for a long time, and I love to use it to create um, 
things that look like bark and look like vines and so uh, you saw me also use the part of one of these in the grave. Um, I also use some of this for the vining that goes around the usher uh, tomb. So um, here you see a picture of the tall tree, the bigger tree, and it's got the darker color of elements. And then you see the smaller tree and it's got the lighter color. And then here's the three different colors that I used. The first one was the one that I used on the small tree, then the large tree, and then the last one was uh, was the one I used for the grave and I will have uh, the names of all these and the, and the links to this on my blog post as well as I'll have all the names of all the different um, colors of the spray paint that I used. Now in terms of the leaves what I did to create the leaves that you see sprinkled everywhere is I used some uh, some leaf hole punch and I punched vellum and I like vellum because it's a double sided and these little leaf punches don't punch well through heavy paper at all so if I were to punch lightweight paper um, that was colorful the backside would be white and so you know it's a pain in the butt to make sure they're all turned over so I think vellum works really nice if you can just uh, get some fall colors sometimes you can find vellum that has more than one color in it and some of my leaves do is punch from that type of vellum and so I think that looks uh, really cool and then you can kind of see a upper shot of the of the cemetery where I've just sprinkled those leaves everywhere I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I've given you some ideas for your own projects. Almost all the products I used are carried by Alpha Stamps. For more information about this project, including additional pictures and the complete supply list, hop over to my blog. If you're on my blog, you're already there. If you're on YouTube, you'll find the link to the post for this in the description area.